run a group called the Rainwater Club, who work on rainwater harvesting and sustainable water use. India is facing a major challenge in water management, and especially cities uh, are facing a very big challenge because of the increasing population, the growing economy. So as things develop, uh, cities are finding that they have to go further and further to get water. And so they're starting to intrude on uh, dams meant for agriculture and irrigation, and the water footprint is growing. So the paradigm shift which cities need to do, and which now I work on and a lot of other people work on, is to close the hydrological cycle within the city itself. Can we make best use of rainwater, surface water in the lakes and rivers of our cities, groundwater, which is a very important resource, and treated wastewater, so that the city does a recycling of the whole hydrological cycle. Well, I use the paradigm of the open well, and uh, the open well, uh, or the dug well as it's called, is an old ancient uh, technique which has been used in India for more than 6,000 years now. And the well speaks to you. A dug well tells you about resource availability, it tells you about approaching summer, it tells you how to change behavior, and tells you to use a resource in such a fashion that it doesn't run out. The well talks to you. That's the paradigm that I use. In cities, we've shifted away from the well to taps. The taps no longer talk to us, or the deep bore wells, they no longer talk to us. They don't send us ecological signals. During the rainy season, when India gets its water, the well is full. You can use the water plentifully. But as summer approaches, the well water starts to decline with the aquifer. Now your behavior has to change. Water is now becoming scarce as a resource. So you have to now temper your behavior and use water less till it's replenished the next year, in the next season. This is the well talking to us. The well also reflects pollution. If you pollute the immediate environs, the well water is polluted. It tells you that you have to change your behavior on the land. This is uh, it's a powerful uh, notion and it's a very interesting notion uh, with which we have to look. But the well only talks to those who are willing to listen. The challenge is how do we get these ecological signals to affect behavior change. And that is the paradigm that we have to move around and get that understanding and that notion. Now that happens at an individual level or at an institutional level. When it starts to happen at a city level, when the city starts to talk to its waters, when all the waters in the city are clean, are ready for the citizens to enjoy, when every citizen in a city has access, equal access to good quality water, especially the poor, when all the wastewater and sanitation from the city is taken care of properly, then the city can truly be called a water sensitive city. It moves away from functionality to aesthetics, the ecological experience of water, and finally the cultural and social experience. If all this happens, that's what one should ideally aim for. We have to, as a citizenry, become water literate. So water literacy is being personally aware of the water that you consume and your right and responsibility to that water as an individual and as a society. So this means that everybody who's involved with the water sector, from the well diggers, from the bore well diggers, from the pump manufacturers, from the water pipe providers and suppliers, every one of them in their paradigm, in their domain, have to understand this message of communication and have to work their devices around communicating. For now, unfortunately, pricing is the only mechanism by which signals are communicated for behavior. But pricing is not enough. It is necessary, but it is not enough. And so we have to move beyond pricing to something else. Such as? Such as, for example, a pump which tells us what water quality is in the borewell or how much water is available in the borewell. Uh, such as, how much water can I have a use today? How much am I entitled to? How am I doing vis-a-vis -vis other uh, citizens in my own category? How much am I entitled to? And how much of it is responsible consumption? These are all communications which are necessary from various sources. Persian wheel, which is an invention which would draw water from a well, which was extremely efficient, but which could only draw from 20 meters. So there was a limit on it. 
extractive technologies like pumps these days have, are almost limitless. They can draw from 300, 400, and 500 meters. There's no limit to which they can go. How do these extractive technologies negotiate with ecological limits? That is the challenge before us. And that ecological limits should be signaled by these extractive devices to the consumer, to the citizen, so that behaviors are modified and changed to make things sustainable. Civil engineering is no longer the answer, in my belief, to a problem which is clearly social in dimension and ecological in dimension. So we now have to re-architect our institutions. We now have to get different kind of expertise and skill sets. We have to rebuild our institutions to be able to face the current challenges. And as we were discussing, the current challenges are one of equity, social justice. How do we get water to all? Which requires community listening and organization skills. And the other is the ecological challenge of water itself running out. The big challenge for us in Indian uh, cities is that uh, those who have access to pipe networks get water at subsidized costs. And those who do not have access suffer the most. The poor who are not connected to the pipe network pay the highest price for water through monies but also through health. Now, a city's paradigm for equity would be some water for all and not all water for some.